In this video, I am going to provide you with three different examples on how you could build a roof that changes pitch somewhere over the exterior wall here. And we have about a two foot overhang coming out in this direction and about a one foot overhang coming out off of the gable end. And in our first example, we are going to be making a roof that is going to be a little stronger and something that wouldn't look as attractive from below and might might require some type of a soffit covering. And like I said, this one is probably going to be the strongest out of all of them. And since I am not a structural engineer, I will not be able to provide you with any engineering details. However, I will be able to provide you with something, in my opinion, the 40 years I have in the business, tearing all this stuff apart and seeing what works and what doesn't work, something that an engineer or an architect might want to use. And as you can see here, the the rafter, the roof rafter, extends past and provides us with nailing for the board we're going to use to change the roof pitch. And the scrap piece that you cut out of this side here can actually be used to fill this area in and provide you with even more nailing. Once you nail this to the rafter over here, you're going to make this overhang even stronger. And since we cantilever out about one third and go back about two thirds, in most cases, we are going to use a six foot long board here, cantilevering out two feet, going back four feet. However, I have noticed some changes in the building codes where they wanted to stick out a quarter and go back three quarters, which means if this stuck out two foot, this would need to go back six foot. And that's just going to make something like this stronger. So keep that in mind when you're designing something like this. So again, plenty of nailing here, maybe some 16 D's, 12 inches on on center staggered and our outlookers here and if you notice I do not have an outlooker in the center here and that might require you to add some type of building hardware to the back side of it and our seat cut here will look something like this on our 4 and 12 roof pitch and a 2 and 12 roof pitch. So I just simply cut the roof pitch in half to provide us with a low sloping pitch. And again, another view of that. And since we are using 2 by 8 for our rafters, this will be the leftover piece again once you make this cut. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the other side so I can show you where the rafter ties are going to be in the way here. So make sure you install them to where they are not going to to be in the way. And again, something like this might need a mending plate or a flat piece of metal, maybe even a strap, to prevent these boards from twisting or separating somehow. And in our second example, we are going to use six foot long two by eights, but we are not going to shape them. And the reason for that will be to have an exposed overhang from the bottom or something that's going to look a little nicer from the bottom. Now here you can see where I ran the lookout and had it butt into the center here to provide nailing for the fascia board on both sides. And I'm going to use this board here to create a lower section of the roof roof framing that the upper section can sit on top of. Now it's just going to be at the gable ends and I don't recommend doing something like this all the way through. However, you would need to check with your local building authorities to verify that information. And we will use a shaped block here to support this rafter and of course a block on the other side also. And this rafter will die into one of the gable studs and then you could always notch the gable studs around the rafter, which you'll see here in a second. And I went ahead and used a long 2x6 here to provide additional support. And you could always install a variety of different types of framing hardware here. For example, maybe some angled framing anchors here and some hurricane ties or straps here. And of course, this provides you with a better view of what we're doing with the six foot two by eights here. And I want to point out in the first examples, we have not cut any seat cuts in these overhang boards or positioned the rafter ties in the correct location. Now, the reason why I left this like this is just to drive this point home and make sure that you don't end up with a problem like this, because I'm sure some 
some of you are going to leave this where it is and notch this board around it. And that might not be the best way to build something like this. And of course, another view of the blocks, the overhang, the sheathing, and the fact that the sheathing is not going to break over the blocks here. And I will be providing you with more information about how you can fix that in our last example. So again, this line right here actually needs to move over. And I say actually, but it might not need to if you have something approved by a local building authority that might suggest blocking this somehow so that you can have a connection with the sheathing. Now, as far as I'm concerned, after you've nailed these boards to the roof rafters, you're going to have a nice structural tie. And I can't see this thing coming apart. However, if these are the blocks that it needs to connect to, then obviously you're going to have to make some changes. And those changes will be to lower the rafter. And to do that, you're going to need to cut a seat cut in all of the overhang boards. And that will look something like this. And of course, our seat cut here, or our notch in our framing extension, boards for the overhang, so that the sheathing will break on the center of the blocks here and make our engineer happy. So a view from the bottom here. If you remember, these extension boards were simply sitting on top of the framing plate. And now let's go ahead and put our block back in and take a view here of a nice straight line that we have running down the blocking. And in this example here, we would have moved the joint where these two boards connected to each other in the previous examples down a little bit further. And of course, here I went ahead and dropped the block and used a 2x6 instead of a 2x4 and then notched it around everything so that I could get some nailing here for this side of the fascia board. And again, just kind of throwing out some more ideas, something that might work for you, might not work. And of course, the upper gable roof rafters are still sitting on top of the lower rafters. And even though I left the shaped block, you're probably not going to need it with a seed cut. And when we have everything where we want it, we can go ahead and install the sheathing. Now I went ahead and left this here to provide you with an example of how far we moved all of this forward so that it would break on the blocks. And here you can see where the lower piece is going to break halfway on the blocks, same as the upper piece. And these blocks also might need to be shaped so that they match both pitches. I didn't do that in this example. And since this version here was meant to provide you with an example for lower pitches, like a 4 and 12 and a 2 and 12, in our next example I will be raising the pitch on both of them to provide you with a few more examples for those designs. And when they are completed I will put a link in the video or in the video description area to those videos.